And good morning, Minecraft. This is Mr. Kassarian, and welcome back to another episode of Modded Minecraft. So we are plowing ahead with our attempts to get our nuclear reactor up and running. Now, the first thing we need to do is get ourselves a working fluid, all right? Now, a working fluid is what takes the heat that a reactor generates and turns it into usable work, hence the name, working fluid, all right? Right. So that seems to be pretty self-explanatory. Now, what working fluids do we have available? Well, as always in Minecraft, there is the working fluid of water, <clears throat> right? So the reactor heats up. Uh, you have fission reactions taking place in the fuel rods, which cause generate heat as atoms are split. And that heat is then used to boil water, right? It also keeps the reactor cool and keeps it from blowing itself up, right? Right. So we could use water and water is pretty basic. And in Minecraft, it's easy. We just have to get an infinite water source, a pump with enough power, and turn into steam, void the steam after we use it, and we're all set and ready to go. However, that's not very efficient, all right? Instead, we're gonna use ammonia. All right, now ammonia is a proposed working fluid. I don't think any modern reactors use ammonia as a working fluid, all right? I don't think. I can't think of any designs I've seen that have ammonia-based working fluids before, but that doesn't mean that none exist, all right? So I... Don't quote me on the fact that there aren't any, but I don't think there are, all right? Now, ammonia delivers about twice the torque to a turbine that you're going to receive from a standard power plant, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves an ammonia synthesizer, okay? Crafted like so, ammonia synthesizer, okay? Now, the ammonia synthesizer, as I remember, doesn't need any power, right? Right. So we're going to stick that guy right here. But he has to be hot, all right? If we check our handbook, reactor craft, we should see under processing machines, ammonia synthesizer, 220 degrees. I think we'll get up there with the nether rack fire underneath it, okay? Now, we don't want to get this thing too hot, because if we get it too hot, it's going to explode. Explode. Yes, explode. All right. So what we'll do is we'll come out like this, because we also need some water here and here. All right. Water, 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 water. Clicky, clicky. And you can see he is filling up with water. All right. <clears throat> now, we need two other things in here to generate ammonia. All right. We need quick lime, which we get from cooking calcite crystals, I believe it's, or an egg in a blast furnace, apparently. Um, and we also need to get ourselves some ammonium chloride, okay? Yeah, all right, so let's take a look at what we have for ammonium chloride. So we have some from reactor craft and we're getting some more dust out of uh, rotary craft, okay? And I think I might have a hopper laying around somewhere. You guys don't understand how nice it is to just be able to go, hey, I need a hopper now and not have to do plates and uh, great tech. I mean, I complain, but I am also the one who's developing that pack and playing that series, so I enjoy it. Quick shameless plug, please go check out the Industrial Rotation series, hey. Uh, yay, shameless plugs, all right. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stick this guy up here, all right, and we should get up to about 220 with this. And we're gonna shove the chloride, the quick lime, and the ammonium chloride in there, okay? And once we get up to a high enough temperature, we should find that this guy will start to run. All right. It said 220. So now the problem with chloride, chlo uh, ammonia is that it's hard to produce. All right. So we're not going to want to open cycle this. We'll have to build this as a closed cycle power plant. More importantly, however, is the fact that even though it is closed cycle, we're going to need to recompress, to cool the fluid, recompress the fluid, and you all that. The other problem with ammonia is that it's a little volatile, all right? Which means that we're going to have to, in essence, make sure the reactor never gets above about 600 degrees, okay? So I'm aiming for a temperature about 200. Okay, we're up to 220. And you can see we're now producing ammonia. which apparently doesn't want to come out that side. What about this side? Yay, that works, okay. And of course I forget that we can't do it like that, so let's 
Hitbox issues, okay, we'll go with that. And we're just gonna stick the reservoir right here, I guess. And you can see he's very rapidly filling up with ammonia. All right. So we're going to need a fair amount of this stuff. Let's break these. There we go. So we're now producing ammonia. And we actually get a fair amount of it. Like, we're already coming close to filling up this reservoir here. Um, and the reason I'm letting that fill is because we're probably going to build a full-scale storage tank for it. But not right now. Because for now, we're going to actually start building what's going to be the full reactor room. All right. So if I draw a line... And let me just remember what the size of this reactor looks like. At least the planned one I have. So it's going to be one, two, three. Uh, boiler, rod, boiler. One, two, three, boiler. All right, so let's say... Hold on. It's a bit of a weird reactor design, so... Okay, so we have boiler. Thank you, computer. All right, so let's say we have our full design over here. So it's going to go boiler, rod, rod, rod. Boiler. Control. Boiler. One, two, three. Boiler. Does that look about right to you guys? Boiler, rod, rod. Well, we can always build it bigger. So that's going to be... Uh, let's just get out the measuring tape here. Yoink. I could have done the math in my head, but I didn't feel like it. 11. So it's going to be 11 size reactor. Okay. That's fine. Okay, so if I go in, that's a wall, right? That's a wall, that's a wall. So the beginning of the room is here, all right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're at seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. I forgot this room was here. Okay, so that's going to be about 11 in size, right? Right. Okay. So, now what? All right, so that's about 11. So then we need to remember that we need at least three layers of cooling. So we need at least one block on each side of protection. So, one, two. So we're now up to, what, 13, right? Get back here and get... Oh, no, don't take my pick, you jerk. There you go. All right, so that goes out by two. So let's do this again. All right, let's get a measuring tape here. This is the first level of the room, so we'll chop that out. And we should be seeing that it's about 13 here. That's 11. 13. And we said it was 11, so that's fine. Okay, then we're going to need another 3, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then another 2. All right. All right. Now, that should be good there. Now, side to side, let me think about the widest angle. So it's going to be boiler, core, boiler, rod, boiler, core, boiler. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Plus another six gets me 13. Plus two is 15. Okay. So let's start with a 15 by 15. So we'll go uh, one, so it's seven. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that worked out pretty well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now just to clear out the intermediate space here. <laughs> Always the fun part. So as you can tell, this room's actually pretty big. Um, it's a Actually, it's not too much larger than the last core room we built. The difference here is that this reactor is of a very different design because I kind of realized that the design I was using for my other reactor 
or the planned design I was going to use um, back in the old base wasn't going to work well, actually. Um, it was a very inefficient design. I was more basing it on what I thought a reactor should look like, what a reactor core system should look like, versus what Rotary Craft model, or what Reactor Craft actually models. So that is something to keep in mind, that sometimes your reactors may not look like what you expect a reactor to look like. Um, a lot of this is because the way Reactor Craft has to model things, um, because it doesn't have, you know, infinite computing power to work with. So you can't have, you know, in most reactors, you'd have a pressure vessel of some sort, all right? So that pressure vessel would be, um, so you have the core in the middle, right? And that core is a series of rods, okay? And those rods would be spaced in kind of a pattern. I've seen hexagonal core patterns, etc. cetera. Um, and then you'd use that core pattern, and then that core, rather, that core would then be immersed in water, all right? And this is for a boiling water reactor. And as that water heats up, it boils. And as it boils, it creates steam, of course, because that's what boiling is. And then once it's boiled up enough, it's actually going to um, spin a turbine once you've boiled the water there. And there are other reactors, there are liquid sodium reactors, which we'll get to. And there are all sorts of sort of esoteric designs, I guess you can say, that are um, of varying uses and reasons why you'd want to build one. Um, I know the Russians, I think, use a liquid salt reactor aboard some of their submarines. I think we experimented with it at one point, the United States by we, and decided that it was too much of a headache to deal with because it's not really molten salt, it's a molten sodium reactor, and anyone who's taken chemistry, you probably know exactly what sodium does the moment it hits, you know, water. Oh, this is going to be a... Oh, no, good, it's fine, okay. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a pain in the neck. Yeah, I'll just have to cover that up. Okay, so now we have a reactor, right? Right, so we go one. All right, so that's going to be water, and then wall, all right, so let's go wall, water, wall, okay, and so then the reactor will fit in here. I think I made this room the wrong size, because I think I forgot a few things. I forgot two slots on either side, so we'll have to go out by two in the front there, okay. Sorry, this is me building a reactor. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. So I have to go out by two. On each side, because we forgot, which is usually what I end up forgetting. And this also means the reactor is not going to be centered on this, on the entrance for the room. But there isn't honestly much I can do about that. Okay, there we go. So this is quite a decent sized room, by the way. Okay, so I have wall, water, 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 wall, reflector, right? Reflector, and this is the long axis of the reactor. Reflector, boiler, core, 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 boiler, control, boiler, core, 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 boiler, control, wall, or reflector, wall, one, two, three. And I need one more space out here. And yes, reactor design is a little complicated. So yes, we're going to be designing, it's going to be as typical, I'm going to give it a three high lower enclosure in the floor. So the actual reactor pit is going to be this section right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it a three high enclosure, okay? And that should fit the core nicely. 
And let me come back to you guys once I have it dug out. All right, so we're finally putting this core in place. Let's light this up just a little bit. All right, so we are now getting the core put into place here. So we put in the reflectors, we have the core. I realized during the construction of this that I don't have any control rods. Oops. I don't want you guys there. I want to have boilers there. All right, and then I need more control rods that I don't have yet. I'm starting to think I made the room too small. In my side to side analysis. That I most certainly did. All right, because then the fuel rods need to go here. And then we have another reflector boiler on each end. So you can see that this is basically what this is going to be is essentially <clears throat> a series of mirror. It's four three by one cores that are all lined up to interact with each other. All right. So they need to go out. Let's see. Like that like that, and this gives me another line of boilers in here. And I need to go out one more. So the boilers go in like this, and then our reflectors go out like that. Okay. So if I do... Which means that this room needs to go out by two. Right? Except not the way I seem to be wanting to do it. So I'll bump this whole thing out by two. And we'll dig this out. And yes, I, I am burying the reactor in the floor, and there are a couple reasons for it. It actually makes my shielding situation a little easier, um, basically. So it's got one, then we go one, two, three, and then we go like that. And I'm just using this stuff right now as markers. And then I'm going to do the thing you're never supposed to do in Minecraft. Especially not if you clip into your own wall. And I can't do anything cool here because my reactor is on the other side of me. Oh, the troubles you run into when you're building a nuclear power plant, huh? Where's that thing? All right, let's get this out. Of course, probably problem is that I'm carrying around all this other stuff with me, but you know. All right. Here we go, much better. All right, so now we're expanding out the size of the core a little bit and nothing's gonna match up up top. And of course we hit more dirt. That's actually, dirt is the most irritating thing for me to hit when I'm doing this. It's actually kind of funny. Okay, and then where can I get up? Oh, right here. Uh-huh, oh, nope. Uh-huh. 
Mandat de tam. De tam. Da dum. Perfect. All right. So now we just have to get out our steam boiler. And if you notice, this is actually kind of a pancake reactor. Um, it's pretty flat. There's nothing really weird going on with it. Okay, that's there, that's there, that's there. And the last thing we need are those control rods. Well, not quite the last thing we need, but close to the last thing we're going to need. So let's get out back to here, and let's look up what we need for control rods, all right? So how many rods do I need? I need three, six, seven, eight. Eight rods, okay. Now, control rods work by inhibiting neutrons, all right? So they decrease the efficiency of your reactor when they're turned on, but they're really important in case your reactor ever tries to blow up, at which point it won't matter how good your efficiency is. So let's look up control rod. Absorption rods, okay. And how many do I need for three per control rod? Okay, we can do that. So if I need eight control rods, I need one, two, three, one, one, two, three, Two. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. And then I need so two X gear units. I think I can auto craft those. Two X. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So how many of these do I need? I needed eight. Thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and now I, then I need some control rods. And we're out of base plates. All right, not quite that many. Why don't you just get me a stack of the computer? That seems like the easiest way of doing this. All right, so that just got me eight of those. Okay. The other thing we're going to need if we have control rods going is we're going to need something called central control. All right. So that's four circuit boards. And then I need another 2x gear unit. Should get me central control. Perfect. All right, let's put in these control rods, shall we? Now, control rods are kind of interesting, and we're going to need to supply some power into... Yeah, we're going to need to supply some power into this thing to make it sure it works. So, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, there's no way to raise or lower these control rods, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down central control. And there's the reactor, all right? Kind of off the bottom of the screen. But notice how I really can't do anything? Yeah, that's because this thing needs power, all right? And we're going to supply that power, I think, using Electrocraft. I think. But the first thing I want to do is I want to get myself some more fluid pipes. Okay? Because what we're going to do... Let's find... Fluid... Let's find pipe. I'm just going to go stack of them. Because here's what I need to do. I actually need to hook this guy up to receive liquids, all right? And I'm going to assume, possibly wrongly, that the liquids are going to be coming in along the center line of the power plant. So let's go like this. Let's go like that. And this this. And yes, I know that these are forming loops, but I don't much care because I haven't had any issues with loops being a horrible, horrendous thing in the past on my other plays. 
So we'll go through this. And this guy has been running in a test environment. Um, I had some issues. Well, most of the issues where I initially ran this as a water-powered reactor, and then I had to, well, I had some issues getting it cooled down and draining all the water out of it. Okay, so that's good, that's good. So we'll connect these. We'll connect this and this and that. And we'll connect that, and we'll have that come out there. Awesome. And of course, I can't quite do that the way this is done. So we'll have to go one, we'll put him here, we'll put him there, jump to the top of the reactor, and then jump out. Awesome. Okay, so we're assuming right now that our line's coming in through here. And the problem is that this is the cooling pool. So that's an issue. Well, we can always have, uh, yeah. So what we'll do here is this will be a break in the cooling pool, okay? And then And that's a tunnel, or a cave, or whatever you want to call it. So we're going to have this coming straight out, right? And then we'll have it... Hey, you looked like you were a solid block. That's not fair. Alright, so then let's come up like this. Oh, good. Perfect. And then we'll just have you come out over like this. And then this guy. So let's do this. And a th shovel. And we'll say that this thing's gonna go one, two, space, and then down, and we'll put our reservoir right there. You need more ammonium chloride. Now, by the by, don't let that get above 600. Don't do it. All right, so let's look up ammonium. Ammonium chloride. And we'll shove that in there, too. Because we have to generate more and more of this, all right? Because the reason I'm connecting this early, well, quote-unquote early, is because I need to see how much liquid will actually be required to fill this thing up. Okay. So I want to get the reactor completely full before I actually go off and start, you know, powering it up, basically. All right. So that's flowing out there. This guy comes over and then down. I said, and then... Oh, well, it looks like we're having some clip issues on that. Uh, I don't want to use that because that's actually somewhat valuable. So let's shove that there. Let's put that there. There we go. Let's clip that off. Clip that off too. Perfect. Okay. So that's producing that. We have ammonium chloride. We need more quick climb apparently. All right. Well, I'm going to manage this for a little while, at least until I have enough ammonia stored up inside of that reactor. that I'm not worried about it. Uh, yeah, I need more quick line. So, take a look. We should see we're starting to fill up in here. Yeah, we're starting to fill up on ammonia. It hasn't gotten this far down the pipes yet. And that's fine by me. Um, as long as we're getting some and it's not an issue, we're fine. 
But anyways, guys, this has been Mr. Kassarian, part one of our reactor build. The reactor is now in place and successful. It is not ready to turn on yet, but we should be getting there in a little bit. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Mr. Kassarian. Until next time, happy mining.